And welcome back. In the wake of the Tyree Nichols killing, we continue to seek answers from our community leaders about what they're doing to prevent those types of incidents from happening here. And last night, we heard from three local police chiefs, Madison Sean Barnes, Janesville's David Moore, and Beloit's Andre Sales. And they discuss what they're doing to address internal culture in their departments and the tools they're using to assure the public situations like the Tyree Nichols incident won't happen in their communities. And we continue that discussion tonight with two Madison state lawmakers. We are happy to have with us Representative Sheila Stubbs from the 77th Assembly and Francesca Hong from the 76th Assembly District. Ladies, thank you so much for being with us on this uh, Friday evening. First, let's get your thoughts um, on the Nichols incident. Uh, you know, all these incidents are different, right? They, they all have different components to them, but all of them are very troubling when we see those. And often, as we mentioned over and over again, they're on they're on the on the national network news. We see them over and over again. Is this Sheila? Do we, do, is this part of a, a, a inherent issue, a systemic problem? Do you think? First, give an honor to God, who is the center of my life. I want to extend condolences to Mr. Tyree Nichols' family, his community, the city of Memphis, and all those that are suffering from his mourning. Let's be clear: Mr. Nichols should be here with us right now, but I think it has a lot to do with culture. I think it has a lot to do with police chiefs setting the stage and setting the premise and making sure that all of these officers that are trained are following the protocols, the practices, and holding them accountable. If they are breaking the law, let's hold them to the same standards we would have anyone else. Francesca, when you see this, is this a system-wide, a system problem that needs to be addressed? I think the system is beyond broken, and policing itself was not designed to prevent violence and keep communities safer. It is one that is keeping our communities not only more uh, susceptible to violence, um, but it's also putting police officers at risk. So it's important to keep the framing around policing uh, to the fact that it is an institutional problem that is inherently rooted in white supremacy, and it's very important that we combat this by making uh, investments in our community like child care, health care, education, and youth programming. You know, we all get tired of seeing these stories. They're horrible to watch. I'm sure a lot of officers, we, we always want to remind, there's so many good officers, too. We lost one this week in Milwaukee. Um, what can you guys do? And we'll start with you, Francesca, as lawmakers. What can be done at the state level with where your power rests? And I know your power is limited. But what can you do? What can what would you like to see lawmakers do? We can put our money where our values are. We are in a budget process, and we have an opportunity for this state budget to reflect the values of our communities and help people feel safe. We can invest in community investments like childcare, like in our education, like in housing. We can combat poverty that is inherently tied to where there are communities with more violence. So if we eradicate poverty, if we combat food insecurity, if we think about public safety and the feeling of safety being an inherent human right, we don't have to rely on police officers to be on the call of duty for when there is so much violence. Sheila? Thank you, Eric. Thank you for this interview. Let's be very clear. In uh, 2020, Speaker Voss created the Speaker's Task Force on Racial Disparities. I was honored to be the co-chair and to work bipartisan with former Representative Jim Steinecke, who is the majority leader, to work on uh, crisis level interventions that impact our criminal justice system. Let's be clear, we came up with 18 recommendations and I'm sitting here today to say nine of those recommendations were signed into law. I think it's really important when you're given a chance to work bipartisan that you do that. I'm a very practical legislator. I believe in making sure that our communities are safe. I believe in law enforcement. There's good and bad in everything. But I think when you decide to put your community together and comprise a task force of, of speakers, of preachers, of protesters, of legislators, and not doing the blame game, but really looking at how do we keep our community safe? How do we make sure our officers are well when they go to work? And then how do we make sure that Tyree Nichols' case, Mr. George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and should I say their names, continue to happen across the state of Wisconsin? It's when we go together, together, when we make sure our money meets our values, and let's make sure in the state of Wisconsin that we are supportive of the policies and practices that Governor Evers have put before us. Sheila, thank you. In, in the little bit of time we have left, Francesca, are there things that you've seen that do work uh, out there? 
Here in Madison, we've implemented the CARES program, and they have responded to over 900 calls for mental health crises. We know that addressing mental health services um, and making sure that folks in these crisis situations have care that they need instead of making that call to the officers. I think the more we can invest in people and invest in their health, we can have thriving communities, but we absolutely have to make sure that the investment is going to the community and not to further law enforcement. Well, ladies, thank you so much. I really appreciate you being out here with us on a Friday night. Thank you so much. Thank you. And of course, we want to um, continue this discussion. It's a very important topic, and of course, we never have enough time on the news, but we want to remind folks our conversation on this issue will continue Sunday on For the Record with Naomi Coles. We invite you to tune in after Face the Nation at 10.30 Sunday morning for a much more in-depth discussion, and we'll be right back.